And here's the team designing the bell housing to couple the power glide transmission to the electric motors. Since we're going to be using a modified small torque converter with the uh, automatic transmissions on this car, we need a bell housing, custom bell housing. So we bought this huge chunk of stock that's the right diameter and we're going to bore the inside out and shape it and everything. But uh, we got to get the outside trued up and, and cut flat. And when you get these things whacked by a big industrial saw, they're not squared up. So the way we're going to do this is I've drilled three holes and I am now tapping those so that I can then screw these levelers in that we made. So we will put these levelers in. We will then set this piece in the CNC machine upside down on the feet. We'll then use the CNC machine with a uh, meter to go up and down and make sure it is absolutely straight, machine the top. Then we can flip it over and we know we have a true flat bottom surface. We'll then clamp that down and do the same thing to the other side. And then, of course, mill it down to the exact right uh, height that we need for the bell housing. Pretty cool, huh? That's what you do when you don't have a humongous big fancy CNC machine and you have to do a little bit of invention in the shop. And here's one of the two pieces that have been done the way I just described. So you can see this was the side that had the levelers originally. We did a perfect surfacing on that side, flipped it over, and then used these Mighty Bike clamps to hold this in place, and then just surfaced the top. Now we'll just go ahead and continue to take this top down so that we have the exact height that we want. But that's how it works. So this is machining out the inside area of what will ultimately be the bell housing. And uh, we're going to stop in just a moment. We have to stop every so often and get the chips out of the inside so it doesn't start welding chips. So Jack has stopped the machine and then let's see what's going on down in here. So this is what's coming out. Very uniform. What's the name of this tool again, Jack? What's it called? Shear hob. A shear hob. So it's designed literally to remove lots and lots of aluminum. Alright. And here we are working on the outer case. I'm trying not to get coolant on the camera. As you can see, this is the first pass to take off the outside of the bell housing. Sorry about the noise, guys. The CNC machine's working on a motor mounting plate. So this is Joe Mann. You guys have seen him in other videos. Joe just got back from Gustav Tool and Die in Seguin, Texas, which is outside of San Antonio. And this is a big step. We've been trying to find a way to mate a baby power glide to these uh, high performance AC racing motors. So Joe, tell us what they did for us down there. So basically we built a hub that resembles or represents the back end of a uh, Chevy 350 crankshaft flange. And, and it's been splined internally uh, to fit the output shaft of the motor. And essentially it slides up and over. There you go. You got it? I do. There we go. Ah, nice. And so that Take allows us to, from their back, represent a Chevy 350 or Chevy product line drive drivetrain setup. So now when we get our custom bell housing made, ba-boom, we're in business. All right. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. All right, so here is a, a big moment for us. So as mentioned earlier, we fabricated pieces to weld together for a custom bell housing to connect the power glide. Uh, we got that welded together and we assembled it all together for test fit. And so here is the welded bell housing now uh, and the power glide transmission with the dual core racing motor and everything bolted up beautifully. Perfect. Now we got to disassemble the whole thing again and we've got to get the sleeves for the motor mounts welded into these flange sockets here. So there'll be the four motor mounts, you'll have your rear transmission mount, and of course we've started uh, fabricating a cradle system that we'll use to move it around and to also put it on the transmission jacks for test fitting it up into the motor bay area and tunnels and see what modifications need to be done there and check everything out. But 
I love this. Showed it to my wife, and she said, what is that? A jet turbine? I went, no, baby. You, you know, you're close. You're close. All right, so now we've had the uh, motor mount sleeves nicely tigged in to these uh, machined parts, both front and rear. And uh, as you can see here, the ears have been tacked onto the frame to check positioning, and it's a beautiful positioning. And then for the rear, we didn't want to make it too complex to take the motor in and out. So we fabricated a plate here, and it has uh, big, deep threaded bungs welded onto the back side. And then what we'll do is this, in turn, will be bolted on. That way we can drop the motor in and out by just removing these bolts out of the frame rather than trying to slide the rubber bushings and the ears in and out of the brackets. So soon we will actually put this in and make sure everything clears.